the, the H2R really, I'd actually seen it at the NEC show on a dyno run and watched YouTube videos of the thing and it in a way probably frightened me a little bit because it was so fierce and you know these horsepower figures that they, but it has, it's, uh, it's, it's quite intimidating, you know, the thing looks intimidating. The boys had run the bike up and got up to temperature and I <laughs> sat on the thing, I'd only sat on the thing in static in the awning, you know, so to sit on something running and that the feel through the throttle of that thing is, is fierce. It's so responsive and angry, so um, quite intimidating. But you know, we headed off down Bray Hill, and well, as soon as I dropped the clutch, the thing was so responsive. I'd probably give it more revs than I needed to, and it just took off. And I was expecting to be shocked, but it shocked me more than I expected. The first few gears are absolutely insane, just really crazy. So. Uh, I got up to like fourth gear, I think, down Bray Hill and um, through the bottom, she, um, she ground out through the dip and, uh, you know, it, and then uh, up over Ago's Leap and the wheeling, it was surreal, like really, the, the power of the thing throughout all the gears is just phenomenal. <music> Left the, uh, the Balagheri section down the hill towards Crosby and um, really got the thing singing and the first time up to sixth gear and uh, heading up towards past the pub and the jump at the top of Crosby and um, I was a little envious really of the people at the side of the road, there was a big crowd there and uh, either side and um, I wanted to know what it sounded like coming past there you know because I don't think you could be human if, you were, if your hairs weren't standing up when that came past in sixth gear singing. I'd kind of gotten a feel from the bike by now and um, pushed on a bit, exiting Glen Helen up the hill, got the drive good onto the Cronky Body Straight, and it's a long, a long, dead straight bit of road with a very fast right kink at the end, and it's almost like a, a runway, and it, in racing, I always look forward to that's the first kind of rest point where you get a break and time to sort of breathe. The uh, Kurt Michael section is another section you know, I always look forward to, and uh, I think especially for the fans and people just spectating on, on, on the TV is, um, it's a bit of a reality check because you know this track was, is closed for motorcycle racing and uh, the rest of the year that's just a small village with a 30 mile an hour speed limit, post offices and cars parked down the side of the road so um, you know you get a real uh, feel for the speed because you're sort of there's curbs, pavements and then it's brick walls each side. Okay so the Solby straight section is um, peak, that's your top speed normally you know, on the race bike, that's the fastest part of the track for us. I got quarry bends pretty good, you know, not as quick as I do on my race bike, but good enough and um, got her into sixth and just sat back with the throttle on and uh, I knew we were shifting, you know, because it's a funny sensation at that speed, it's just sort of tunnel vision. You know. The GPS speed was 206.9, so that was... Uh, interesting. Climbing up the, the mountain was surreal. You kind of go into a bit of dreamland almost on the mountain because the spectators are quite scarce. And you can see a long way ahead so it's kind of like you can relax a little bit. It was quite nice just to kind of take in what was actually happening, you know, and um, by that time we'd done 25 miles and uh, more and it, I, I felt pretty good with the bike. You know, I sort of got the slow bit out of the way and uh, out of Governors up on the Glen Crutchery Road for the finish line and um, I got it actually into to fourth gear and I thought I was safe. I'm sort of past the wheelie zone now, it's going to be... Uh, give maximum throttle and it actually still just wheelied and you know it was it's just a it's just insane the whole thing was uh, it still hasn't really sunk in I don't think it was a special day for sure for me and for Kawasaki and everyone witnessing that it was a uh, quite an event